Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. And with the Templar going through some massive nerfs, I asked myself, what would be the number one class to replace the Godplar? And I found it. It's the God Crow, a stamina necro hybrid that is just survivable, doesn't require trials gear, doesn't require mythics, and is absolutely survivable, hard hitting, resource sustained, and everything you want to be solo YOLO proof. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how the build works, the skill, the gear, and all that. I'm also gonna give you a lot of different loadout and options for gear. So if you have access to Trials and Mythics gear, great. I'll give you a sweaty spaghetti set that will absolutely rock. I'll show you what I use to clear Veteran City of Ash 2 hard mode without Mythics or Trials gear. And also give you a beginner setup and kind of some ways to progress with this build. Also, we're going to do a deep dive on the skills so you know exactly how and why to use them. And so you're prepared to take this God Crow out and solo pretty much anything the Elder Scrolls Online has to offer. Before we get started, if you get anything out of this video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'll keep cranking out some solo PvE, maybe a PvE tier list. And I wonder where the God Crow would be on that. Okay, so what do you need to know about the Stamina Necro Hybrid? Some things that have changed or might be different if you're coming back to the game or a beginner. Essentially, the Stamina Necro struggled with resource sustain. It had a lot of action per minute and a very high stamina dominant skill setup. So it was very, very hard to resource sustain and you had to use outside gear sets or what we call parse food to be able to do this, which you would run really risky low HP. But that has changed. And the reason why is the hybridization changes in Elder Scrolls Online. If you don't know what that means is, previously the game looked at what the cost of the skill was. So if you casted a magic ability, it would use magic and scale your max magic and your spell damage for effectiveness. No longer is that the case. So whatever you cast, whether it's stamina, whether it's magicka, it looks at your highest offensive stat. What this means is a stamina character like the Necro can use really hard hitting magic abilities, one, two, three, or more, and still be considered stamina by stacking the attributes into stamina, but also being just as effective. This gives stamina an enormous advantage because you can dip into your magic pool and keep your stamina flowing and resource sustained. You can, in fact, on this Necro, heal very effectively by using magic and using your stamina pool just for doing damage. This is what made the enormous difference in the Stam Crow's effectiveness, the hybridization changes. Another thing that's recently changed to be aware of is dots last a lot longer. So a couple in-class dots will now last 20 seconds instead of 10. Why that's relative is the Stam Necro was incredibly difficult to master. It has high action per minute, but this 20 second dot change on a couple of abilities makes it a lot more manageable. The Necro, unlike a lot of other classes, really doesn't sit there and spam your main spammable over and over. It's a very active, fun play style, and you're using corpses to feed other damage dealing components of your build, and it's a really fun play style. And just raising that up a little bit, that damage over time, makes it more manageable for someone that doesn't have super high actions per minute. So to recap, your hybrid changes allow you to free up resource sustain, which was a big, huge no-go for me. And then the dots lasting a little bit longer make it much, much easier. And you also have an ability called Ruinous Scythe, which I'm going to cover in detail a little bit later. But think of this as kind of like the new jabs. This thing is AoE. It does decent damage. It procs status effect. And it heals you like a massive jackhammer. And it's stamina cost. So Templar had jabs, which is basically biting jabs, does stamina damage, costs stamina, but doesn't heal you. Puncturing sweeps costs magic and heal you. This thing, you have two morphs, which you're going to take the stamina one, and it heals us incredibly effective. So single target, AoE, solo, and or in a group, I've taken this thing in. It just performs exceptionally well for the average player, and I think you're going to love it. So let me jump into game, show you the skills, show you alternatives, and then we'll jump into gear. Timestamps are below if you wish to skip skip ahead to a specific section. I'm gonna go to the skills, but I wanna explain why I'm using dual wield, why you see basically dual wield in 2H on pretty much every single PVE build. Not a secret, it's because of the passives. The passives here to Twin Blade and Blunt. Each dagger increases your crit damage rating by 812. This is significant. It radically changes your DPS. Trust me, if you go from any other weapon to this, Twin Blade and Blunt is the key. There's also some other ones in here with Ruffian and another one here, Dual Wield Expert increases weapon and spell damage of offhand weapons, but really it's that Twin Blade and Blunt. You get the most crit possible that frees up your build for other stats, maybe running a proc set, maybe running something else for more crit damage. 
But this is why you see so many people running dual wield, twin, blade, and blunt. The weapons and the weapon choices and the traits you can have the most advantage possible. Let's get to our back bar. Now we're using a 2H. Why am I using a 2H? Primarily for Stampede. Stampede is just disgusting hard hitting. It's gap closer, so it gives you some mobility. Um, 15 second duration. It does cost a hefty amount of stamina, 3,500. If you have the Maelstrom Arena weapon, that still actually does pretty uh, good damage. Those were adjusted, but it just does so much for you in a massive amount of AoE for 15 seconds, so it's pretty easy to maintain. That's why a lot of people are using the 2H. is a combination of the Arena weapon, the gap closing capability, the massive single target and AOE pressure. Now you can swap this out and use whatever you want in your back bar. If you don't like using 2H, you could go with a dual wield actually and use deadly cloak on your back bar. Very, very effective because it has major evasion, lowering AOE damage. If you don't like dual wield, you can go on your back bar and use endless hail. That's very good for VMA when the mobs are spawning um, and you can't really use stampede because they're not there yet. So bow also works very, very well. And then pretty much the rest of the skills are somewhat the same and I'll explain that. We're gonna go over the main spammables for the stamp and necro and this is going to give you a larger context of what's going on in elder scrolls online anyways which is a lot of changes to the fundamental gameplay and that's your main spamble choices and options so i've already talked about this before but the main spamble we're going to go with is ruinous sight so slices enemies in front of you dealing decent damage bleed damage which is important that's a really nice um type of damage applying the hemorrhage status effect and setting off balance this thing does a lot in one the hemorrhage status effect can apply a minor mangle reducing hp that's more of a pvp thing same thing with off balance is a little bit more of a pvp thing with the exploiter and the cp passive but one thing to note on off balance that you're going to need to know especially if you're a solo player is that you can consume an off balance with a fully charged heavy attack and resource sustain two times as much so let's go walk up to a dummy here and just hit this thing and i'll show you what it looks like so off balance See how it's off balance and you have the little twirlies above the head. Now that's when you want to do a fully charged heavy attack and consume the off balance. That means you'll get double the resource sustain. Now I think it's around 15 seconds before you can reapply off balance. You get about five, seven seconds of off balance being up. So you're not going to have 100% uptime on off balance. But when you see that off balance and you see that little, little twirlies over the head and you're low on resource sustain, that's when you rip off a fully charged heavy attack and get double the resource sustain. So really important that you know that because as a solo player, it's all down to you to resource sustain yourself. So Ruinous Scythe, it does scale off your max health, not your max stamina, so the healing does. Meaning if you're running a full, you know, DPS build, the healing isn't gonna be out of this world, but for a main spammable to heal you, it's absolutely exceptional. Now, there's a bunch of different options if you want to take this out and adapt the build and change it, or you're interested in what other people are using as their main spamble. So as a necro, you have a couple different options. One in class, which is the skull. So if I take this and I use the stamina base more, it's not even more that way because I don't even use it that much, but you can see Venomous Skull single target has range, um, pretty low stamina cost, and it hits for 7802 poison damage on the tooltip, or this here is 6715 on the tooltip. So much more damage single target if you're doing a parse, you're going into group play, um, or you just want to single target a boss, but you're playing solo. You don't have anyone to heal you. So I'd highly recommend sticking with this, but just realize Venom Skull is a good option. Two other options that you have outside your class kit that are doing very, very well in almost any context, any class right now is Rapid Strikes from Dual Wield. This is kind of a channel 0.8 uh, se seconds, similar to Biting Jabs and, and Jabs right now. In fact, it's outperforming the Templar's Jabs. A lot of people are using this in Trials. Another good option, believe it or not, is Silver Shards from the Fighters Guild. You look at the tooltip here, 8518. It's a massive amount of tooltip, and it's only a 2,079. Plus, putting it on your bar buffs your damage as well. It's range, and it does have some AOE component. Shocker, these two abilities are actually really good. I'm just giving you this information in case you take this and adapt it for more of a group play build. You might want to consider trying and experimenting with those two. But when in doubt, Ruinous Scythe is the bread and butter of what you're going to use and why. The second bread and butter. This is where the skill comes into um, the, the class. And that's using Skulking Blast Bones. Using the magic, one, because it hits harder. This morph does more damage the further the way the enemy is. Typically, you're going to be playing in melee range, but you will see a little bit more damage. Number two is the magic cost. So it's 2,500 magic cost, roughly. And that's going to allow us to maintain a high stamina pool 
and we're gonna use this. So you cast this, it has a six uh, meter radius, 2.5 second um, basically travel time. So if you're on top of it, it'll just kind of see the little skeleton spinning and so forth. How you need to do this as a necro, and this took me a long time to learn, and frankly, that's why I wasn't very good at the class, is it's essentially light attack weaving in two global cooldowns every blast bones. So if you don't know, Elder Scrolls Online is on a, a global cooldown system, meaning the animation of one ability takes a second. So like spin to win, second, second, second. So 2.5 second cast time, you cast this, apply two abilities, and then most likely you'll need to cast Blast Bones again. So you're not really using your main spamble too much, and you'll go to your back bar, maybe cast one or two things, cast Blast Bones again. I'll show you this in the rotation, but just a quick sample here is how it looks. So I'm gonna get in combat here, I cast Blast Bones, then I do light attack, main spamble, light attack, main spamble, and Blast Bones blows up. So then I cast it again. One, two, blows up. That's the rhythm of the Necro. And that is the most important thing to keep up, is keep casting your Blast Bones. It's gonna feed your overall damage, both single target and AoE. It's gonna feed your corpses. It's gonna free up your stamina. And so you need to think, every two global cooldowns, you probably need to cast the Blast Bones up. Once you get that going, you'll be a much better Necro. So the casting the Blast Bones, and this is kind of the fun, cool part of the Necro that is really interesting, creates a corpse on death. So the Create the Corpse on Death feeds into Detonating Siphon. This thing hits like a hammer, and it lasts 20 seconds now. This is one of the dots that's a lot easier to maintain. So you feed your corpses into Detonating Siphon. So you can kind of see how this is gonna play out. You're constantly using your corpses to use and do better damage abilities, and this is one here. Slotting on our front bar does increase 3% damage as well, and it's a hard-hitting dot. And every time you uh, refresh it, it basically blows up and does some AoE damage. So it's AOE damage, it's hard hitting, it's free, it just takes a corpse, which is awesome. Another reason the corpse feeding is so important for the Necro is corpse uh, consumption here. When you use an ability on a corpse, you generate 10 ultimate. It does have a very long uh, cooldown of 16 seconds, but just manually constantly doing this is gonna really generate a lot of ultimate, which is very useful solo or group. So we kind of got what we're doing so far. On our front bar, we're gonna maintain Blast Bones, we're gonna start doing uh, Ruin of Scythe uh, as our main spamble, our filler and then we're gonna be using Detonate and Siphon. Consider that Ruin of Scythe is gonna be used when you need health or you just need a filler, meaning your dots aren't up. Your goal is to keep your dots and maintain them and keep your health up, obviously. But if they're down, that's when you need to reapply them priority, assuming you're not in trouble, and then use Ruin of Scythe as a filler in between those Skulking Blast Bone cast. Next ability up is fighter, uh, Fighter's Guild Barb Trap. So this lasts 20 seconds now as well. So it's much easier to maintain this and you're primarily using it for the minor force, increasing your critical damage buff. Couple different ways you can get this gear sets, but this is just really easy. It does a lot of damage, single target. So you have to plop it down at arms, bang, it traps, does damage over time. Um, and it really buffs your bar as well. So Fighter's Guild increases your weapon and spell damage by 3% for each. So you can see we're setting up our bar to take the most advantage possible out of this build. And that's gonna get 3% weapon and uh, spell damage. Also, you generate ultimate when you kill an enemy, when you have a Fighter's Guild ability slotted. So having one on your front bar is very, very handy. Pumping up your damage with, with 3% increased damage here, 3% weapon and spell damage here. If you don't like Barb Trap and you just want to keep your build simple or solo, you can always go with Camouflage Hunter. Just slotting this, you're gonna get um, your crit bonus, which I usually use potions for. But number two, if you crit from the flank, you're gonna get Minor Berserk. So sometimes that's just easier just to set and forget if you can't stand Barb Trap or the build's a little bit too complex but I would highly recommend putting at least one Fighter's Guild ability in that three key on the front bar. So now you have a 20 second dot here, you got a 20 second dot here, and then you can see Blast Bones ruin a sight. Now I have Spin to Win or um, Dual Wield uh, Whirling Blades. So this is an Execute, meaning at 50% health or lower, it starts hitting harder and harder and harder. So it'll start outperforming your main spamble roughly around 30, 25%. I usually use it right around 25%. Usually at that time, the damage goes up significantly, allowing me to really close out and finish a mob and or AOE fights because it's in 360 radius. The downside is this doesn't heal you and it costs a lot, 2,700 stamina. So that's why I wait pretty much till I'm getting pretty low uh, on the boss's HP. I want this to really hit hard. Solo can hit anywhere from 40 to 50,000. So what I do is uh, I use Ruin of Scythe to make sure my health is up. And I've had an execute solo. I have no one healing me 
then I'll use spin to win. As soon as my health dips, I'll do one ruin a scythe real quick to get my health back up and then start spinning. Health dips, I go to ruin a scythe, keep spinning. Group context, you don't need to do that because someone's pretty much gonna be healing you the whole time. But that's kind of the flow of it. Only use whirling blades when your health isn't below like 60 or 75%. And then go back to spamming ruin a scythe, keeping your blast bones up, even when you're in execute. Consider execute phase 25% HP or lower. So 2H, we're gonna use a stampede here. We're gonna stampede in on our back bar as part of our rotation. Usually the next skill I use is carve. So carve is really nice for solo. It does bleed damage. The bleed damage can stack so you can spam it three times and it lasts over 30 seconds, which is a lot easier. It also gives you a huge shield. So typically what I do when I'm in trouble is I cast a stampede, I cast a carve, then I'll do a resolving vigor, which is my heal. So the shield will keep my health bar from moving down significantly while the resolving vigor keeps getting my health back up. So that's why I really, really love of carb. So the combo here that the Lambo Bambo combo that I like to call it when you get really good at this is Stampede, Light Attack, Carve, Bar Swap, Cancel. This will increase your DPS dramatically. So let me try to show you this quick. See that? So what I did was I, I Stampede, I do a Light Attack, then I do a Carve. As soon as I click the button for Carve, I hit my, my mouse, um, my Bar Swap. And you don't even see, it seems like a really goofy animation, but it clips the animation. It animation cancels it with the bar swap. So when you do that, you will do a lot more DPS because it saves time. So that's kind of the thing I've gotten down just by playing plenty of stamina builds over and over and over. Now, if you go the bow route, dual wield uh, route, you don't have to use a uh, carve on your back bar. I highly recommend it though, because of the shield and the bleed is just so easy to stack it. One good ability on your back bar would be Razor Caltrops. The main reason people use this, it's tons of AOE. It's 10 second duration. It gives major breach. So major breach reduces uh, armor. If you don't know, PVE mobs have right around 18,200 armor. One of the downsides of stamina builds is you don't have a whole lot of penetration coming from your medium armor passes. So this is a huge, huge, huge ability for most stamina builds. But thankfully, as a Necro, we have a major breach and we have an AOE major breach with our next ability I'm going to go up. Just consider that a flex. So next ability I'm going to go over, and that is Boneyard. Where is it at? Here we go. Unnerving Boneyard. 2800 magic. Duration is 10 seconds, so this is going to take some upkeep. It's frost damage, but it's major breach. And consuming a corpse on cast deals 30% more damage. So you see here we have now two ways um, of getting back, um, using our corpses for damage. We have great uh, Unnerving Boneyard on our front, and then we have Detonating Siphon on our back. So that's why continuing to feed the corpses, you're going to have one in your front, one in your back. And so this is the primary dot we want to maintain in our back because of that major breach component. This is a gap closer AOE. This is a nice shield and a decent dot. This is like, we need to maintain this. So 2800 Magicka, and this is Magicka as well. Pretty good Magicka sustain, so you shouldn't run out. Now, we have a flexibility on our back bar. So when I'm playing solo, this ability is just absolutely disgusting powerful. And it's called Spirit Guardian. The reason it's so powerful, what I pretty much use in PvP all the time, it's 16 seconds, but it's damage reduction by 10%. And it stacks with major and minor protection. So this is like a super carry for um, survivability. It costs an enormous amount of magic. So it can be very, very difficult to su sustain. But if you want to take on world bosses solo, you want to just like face tank tons of stuff, this is the ability for you. Good alternatives for it. One is Mortal Coil. This is both resource sustain and it's healing. You have to use a uh, corpse, which we should have plenty of corpses by casting Skulking Blast Bones, but it just carries your resource sustain. You can back bar it as well because it increases your healing done by 3%, which will be nice for resolving bigger. Great option there. Another option for pure damage dealers is Skeletal Archer. This thing does a ton of damage. It also lasts 20 seconds. Um, it's a great ability, but the downside is it's pretty heavy on your stamina. So when I ran this and I didn't have trial gear like Vicious Ophidian, I would run out of gas pretty quick, maintaining all of my stamina abilities. Um, even the other morph is okay. It doesn't do as much damage as Skeletal Archer, but it's something you can do and it creates a corpse if you want more damage or if you're playing in a group setting and someone's giving you orbs or shards. Good alternative there. Another alternative that's really good is uh, just a simple set and forget Necrotic Potence. So this it's going to lower your damage, and then you're going to be able to get ultimate and health back for mobs, and it costs nothing. Um, so it just corpses, you're killing stuff solo. It's kind of like Repentance on the Templar. You can see why this has a lot of similarities to the Templar, just a better version in its current form. And so that's just really low, zero resource sustain, tons of HP, tons of ultimate, 
set and forget. But if you want to face tank things, Spirit Guardian is your go-to. And then we have a uh, Resolving Vigor on our back bar. Heal over time. The thing to note here is I give you minor resolve, so it makes you even tankier. I take this morph. The other one just lasts a ton of time. But this gives minor resolve, which is huge for 20 seconds. So just casting this every once in a while before you charge in is actually good. Five seconds for the heal, but... 20 seconds for the minor resolve so that's going to make you more tanky <clears throat> now back bar ultimates it seems odd that i'm using um shooting star but if you didn't skip the intro remember i told you that magic and hybrids are a thing now shooting star pound for pound on a parse dummy or a stationary boss is usually the best ultimate you can use solo but it's stationary so when you cast it if something moves quickly it's not going to be very very good that's the thing you got to be cognizant of and why you use this over fighters guild and i'll go over that one here in a little bit so shooting star mages guild i know it sucks to get a hold of if you don't get mages guild you can always go with uh pestilence colossus this is more of a group play tanks and healers typically run this it gets major bone it does all this damage very quickly so three second duration it's a lot of good stuff in pvp as well but it's just not gonna have the same pound for pound over the entire duration the quick uptime that shooting star is so what i do is i have dawnbreaker on my front Flawless Dawnbreaker is Fighter's Guild. This is much easier to level up than uh, Mage's Guild. Benefit of Dawnbreaker is 20, uh, 125 ultimate, does physical damage, and activating gives weapon and spell damage 300 by uh, 20 seconds. So when you get used to mobs and their behavior, some are stationary and you can just parse on them. Great, Meteor or an opener, Meteor is the way to go. Some are not. They're just zipping around all the time and you got to kind of chase them down with Stampede. That's when I use Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreakers is going to buff my weapon damage for 20 seconds. It's going to hit them with the dot instantly. And then if it transports, I don't have just a, a ground-based AOE sitting there doing nothing. Okay? So I would always, uh, in doubt, start off with a uh, shooting star if you have it. And then rotate to a Dawnbreaker if you're unfamiliar with the mechanics. Just realize Dawnbreaker does have a cast time of 0.4 seconds. So if a mob's trying to hit you with a big, huge, heavy attack, that 0.4 seconds, you will get killed because you won't be able to block. So just be aware of that. So let's go over the rotation really quick. Um, I'm just going to show you on this guy so it's a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and not slot Spirit Guardian. Let's go ahead and just put this, uh, this dead skill here. Okay, so this is what it would look like. On my back bar, I got Meteor. So typically, I want to cast Meteor, charge in, and then do a cast Meteor, do a Boneyard, do a Stampede, Carve, Bar Swap, Cancel. Once I get to my front bar, I want to do a Blast Bones, use the... Um, Use the corpse as soon as I can to feed detonating siphon and then rotate uh, through that. So I'm going to try to narrate this as best I can. So meteor, unnerving, charge, carve, bar swap, and then trap beast. One, two, feed that. And this thing's already daddy spaghetti. So let's go here. We just imagine we cast it a meteor. One, two, three, and then trap. Then one, two, another blast bones, and then one. Go to my back bar on Nerving, then bar swap cancel. One, two, I'm going to cast Detonating Siphon, Blast Bones, go back for a Carve, go back for a Stampede, and then go back for a Nerving. Then go back, one. So you can see every time I go to my front, I'm pretty much always maintaining that. Always maintaining the Blast Bones. You know it's going to come off cooldown as soon as you go to your front, see? So one, I'm going to use a Potion off cooldown. I'm going to feed my Detonating Siphon, cast my Blast Bones, one two cast blast bones bar swap cancel the unnerving stampede everything else is up so i'm gonna cast this guy then there and that's it so i know this is probably pretty confusing for the average player but start with one or two dots actually if you can't maintain it and be really fluid like i have and i'm not the best either but you can't maintain and be super fluid just consider not always doing every single dot if it's too complex Start with the priority system. Priority on your back bar is unnerving. Hits like a truck, major breach. Stampede, just use it as a gap closer. Carve, just use it as a shield. And so really you want to maintain unnerving priority number one. On the front, you want to do your blast bones every basically two or three global cooldowns and maintain detonating siphon. That will get you to start and do really, really well. And then once you're kind of calmed down, you can maintain it. Then you throw a barb trap on, then you throw another carve on, and you add to the dots in the rotation. If you forget anything else, back bar unnerving priority, front bar detonating siphons the priority, and just it takes time to really get that blast bone weave in. And beating on a parse dummy isn't a bad idea, actually, because it'll help you um, get used to how this works and the weaving and the casting the abilities all the time. That skills. Half the video is almost done. Let's talk about gear. There's a lot to explain. Okay, for gear, I'm going to give you a thousand options. Try to rush through this really quick. 
This is what I use to solo um, Veteran City of Ash 2 without Trials gear. Very, very, very simple loadout. What I use is Order's Wrath. Craftable set from the High Isles. It gives you increased crit damage and crit healing by 8% and a ton of crit. Now, I'm an orc, so the crit damage thing is, uh, is important to know. Solo, you're not going to really run into this too much, but you can see crit damage at 46% unbuffed. So, Order's Wrath isn't really that good in Trials because there's a crit damage cap of 125. So you have to add here 20% if someone's going to do a Warhorn and then add another 50% for the base. So you can see we're almost close to that 125 anyways, but for solo, it doesn't really matter. So throw on a Trap Beast, I'm not using Harpooner's Kilt, but just be aware of that. If you take this and kind of evolve it into a group build, you don't want to go over 120. If you're a Khajiit using Fighting Finesse, that number will go up even significantly. But the fact that it's craftable, I don't have to babysit any proc sets. It's just extraordinary. Now, another set, Briarheart. It's not base game. You can buy it from the traders. It's Overland. And in fact, you can get a, uh, do a quest for the daggers. So I do jewelry, bloodthirsty weapon damage with Briarheart, and it just heals me like an absolute hammer. Great for solo players that don't have pale order. Also, I use these poisons here, esca escapist, or you can do drain health. This is how I got Vatish Ram Hollows done without pay order or trials gear when I first started coming back to the game, is use a combination of the poisons and Briarheart on stand bills. Exceptional survivability. And then you have Stormfist. This is base game. Uh, Tempest Island is the dungeon. This thing hits extremely hard right now. This thing is doing very, very, very good damage. And it's extraordinarily easy to get. So Tempest Island, get this one. And there's some other monster helms that are people are running. I'll, I'll tell you what they are. So the uh, top one performing single target, can't even say it, Kelnars from Unhollow Gray. The issue with this is it requires perfect light attack weaving. Only one person can use it. So I pretty much stay away from that. Another set people are using as a monster helm that came back in the meta is Zons. Um, Zons it does really, really well, but it's critical damage with lighter heavy attacks. So I prefer Stormfist because it's just set and forget. It's just damage. So sometimes it'll proc even when I'm out of melee range because one of my dots is ticking. But if you're on a parse dummy or you're doing high-end trials, Zahn's a really good option to uh, go ahead and get. So Tempest Island base game. Now, let me uh, show you some gear charts of uh, what some other options are for you and why, along with the weapon traits and so on. So first gear chart up. This is what I would strive towards if I were you taking the base uh, Order's Wrath Briarheart sets. Vicious Ophidian would be my number one priority. This comes from Hell Raw. And yes, I know it's a Trials gear and a solo build, but if you can get a group together to do AA, Hell Raw, or Sanctum Ophidian and get the five piece, it absolutely carries your survivability. Vicious Ophidian, when you kill enemies, it's gonna restore stamina, give you major expedition, and reduce stamina cost by 8%. You wanna keep that on at all times. Next up is Pillars of Nern. This is the most damage producing proc set in the game. And what a lot of people are switching to end game DPS wise, because there's no babysitting, it's simple set and forget and procs an enormous amount of damage with a high uptime. This comes from Falkreath Hold, so it's pretty easy to get. Not base game though, but I would definitely prioritize getting this, whether you're uh, moving on to end game trials and so forth. Next up would be Pale Order. It's a mythic. It's not that hard to get anymore, but not everyone likes or wants to get mythics. But if you can, the survivability for your character will absolutely dramatically increase. And that will free you up if you don't want to use Scythe to use a harder hitting uh, main spammable. We also have a one piece slime crawl for a little bit of crit. I'm using one light armor on this loadout. That way I can dip into the extra penetration that light armor provides. And the back bar perfected merciless charge uh, 2H. Absolutely staggering damage. Still infused with weapon damage so it carries over your front bar. You notice the weights and traits. So six. Six and one is good, or five and two. Five medium, two light if you can fit it on, all stamina. Still on the weapon traits, Nern or Precise is very good in the main hand, and Charge is still really good in the offhand. Bloodthirsty is okay, um, and Bloodthirsty or an Infuse, if you don't have the transmutes to redo it, Robust will get you by just for a while. And then adjust the weapon damage um, in chance depending on your CP and your survivability. If you need more recovery, just swap one or two of them out. So this is something you need to strive for. So the insane, absolutely disgusting damage sets that you want to go for if you want to take this from solo to all gas no breaks is this setup pillars of nern proc on your back bar you drop an arena weapon this is what the sweats are switching to and actually what i use solo since i have access to the gear but this is not beginner friendly so it'll proc pillars of nern then you'll switch to your front bar and you'll proc well of depths which is another proc set and does 
Not as much as Pillars of Nern, but pretty close. This is outperforming raw damage sets like uh, Coral Riptide or Bosses or uh, Kinra's, and there's no babysitting light attacks or anything. And that frees you up to run a monster helm like Stormfist or Kelnar's and Harpooner's Kilt. So this is what I've been running on endgame PvE builds that I've switched to, and I'm running five medium, two light to get that magic sustain. So this would be endgame. I'm moving on from solo, and I want sweaty spaghetti, not on a parse dummy, but an actual content. Now, if you wanted a parse dummy set, up, I would recommend collecting perfected arms of reliquins, keeping that on your body at all times, and then just using um, something like Pillars of Nern, Harpooner's Kill, and Slime Crawl, and that's a good parse setup. So being on a parse dummy to get your DPS high enough to be in trials, some people require that. The reliquin from Cloud Rest would be your best bet. Now, beginner setup, in case you're just listening to this and wondering where to start. So this is a good option, uh, Hunting's Rage, craftable on your body at all times. I know that if you're coming back to the game, typically you don't always get um, craftable options, but Hunting's Wrath, or Hunting's Rage, rather, is really, really good. Um, Briar Heart in your front bar. Again, not base game, but just the healing is staggering. So if you can get it or buy it from the traders, it's really good. Perfective Merciless Charge, you're not always going to have access to that. And then Stormfist. So let me give you some alternatives. The number one set in Overlands I would go for is Spriggans straight away. You can get this at level one because it's Overland. You can just simply go to the zone. And the zone is Bankerai, so Daggerfall Covenant, and it gives you offensive penetration. That's really good to set on your front bar when you need the damage on your main damage source. Again, it's base game, so very good. Leviathan is actually another decent on the body set. It's basically the mother sorrow of stamina builds, giving you a ton of crit chance. It comes from a dungeon, Crypt of Hearts 1 and Crypt of Hearts 2, which is base game. So getting those sets right away, and you can start going, I think, Crypt of Hearts 1 at level 10 as well, and start collecting those gear sets. Back bar weapon, you grow an agility, which you get from dungeon finders, or it's just extremely dirt cheap on the traders. And then Stormfist Monster Helm is a very good one to go for comes from Tempest Island. But if you don't have that, you can just get some two-piece sets like Trainee, Armor of the Trainee. This comes from all the starter areas like Balfoyan, Betnik, Bleak Rocks, Carnarthys, Roost, Rose Mackay, and so forth. And that'll get you by for a while. So I would start there, work towards getting the Orders Wrath Crafted or something else, getting that Briar Heart, getting that Monster Helm set up, and then going to get that Hell Raw uh, set so you can start farming solo arenas, and then moving on to Trials, you can get Depths of Worrell, Pillars of Nern from Falkreath, and you will just have one absolute Absolutely God tier. Stamp crow. Okay, I promise we're just about done. There's a lot to explain here. So let's go over the, the rest of the little things here in this build. So um, look at this character. I'm an orc. The reason why is I, I'm a PvPer at heart, so I like the speed of the orc. Another thing that orcs has that no one else has is when you deal damage, you get 21, 6, 8 health, and it can occur every four seconds. So stacking the poisons with an orc with ruinous scythe makes you extremely tanky. But you want a Khajiit or a dark elf if you want optimal damage at PvE at endgame. I'm just a PvPer and love this healing on this guy. Um, so after Attribute wise, what I always recommend for people is right around 22 to 23,000 HP. So, depending on your champion points and what level you are, that may vary depending on what race you are. But stack enough so you get 22 to 23,000. Reason why is you will make a mistake. And so you don't want to die and be penalized if you're at 18,000. If you're super experienced, you can get away with 18,000. If you're not, about 22,000 is a safe bet or higher. So, I go 64 into here. <clears throat> I also go with the Thief Munda Stone. So Thief is very, very good. I love the crit chance. Pure solo damage, what is actually the best, is uh, the Lover. The Lover gives you penetration, but it doesn't affect your healing, where crit can affect your healing. You can critically heal yourself. So that's why I go with the Thief even more, because I like being tanky. Now, food options, uh, I'll give you a bunch of choices here. Artarium's Takeaway Broth. This is the expensive version of um, Camorian. I'll show you that here in a second. But it gives you the most health, health recovery, and max stamina. And Dubious Camorian Throne is a cheaper version. I think you can use it at level one as well. So if you have 20,000 gold, you can get a whole bunch of this. Now, if you're a sweat and you uh, start you know, using this and you're just destroying everything, um, this is what you would switch to, Lava Foot. This will get you around around 18 to 19,000 health and will allow you to blow through content because it has the recovery and the max stam, but it doesn't have any health associated with it. So this is the S tier, super experienced player food that you're going to go for. Potions, um, I use the spell power potions. I usually just buy the ones in PvP since I PvP. The Alliance War um, vendor has these. 
or the battleground vendor has a version of this so if you pvp and you have alliance points you can just buy these outright they're pretty cheap but they give you major brutality major savagery at all times so you don't have to slot or use an ability to get that all right now let's go into champion points real quick so the green tree is really just um you know set and forget i have a pvp loadout so i go with war mounter uh, gifted rider i would highly recommend getting this one treasure hunter is very very lucrative it takes a long time to get up there and steed's blessing have some benefit um for movement speed so i have a gazillion champion points that's why i can get access to this now there is a lot to go over in champion points in the blue tree. So I'm just going to educate you in case you don't know this stuff. So fighting finesse here. This is 8% crit damage and crit healing. Backstabber is more. You can see 10%, but you have to be at the flank. That's perfect for a trial where everyone's coordinated. Not perfect for solo YOLO. So I go with fighting finesse. Um, fighting finesse, if you're running Harpooner's Kill and you're fully optimized and you're with a super sweaty trial group, you might actually go over the crit damage cap. So flex spot for that, which is really good in group, is force of nature. If you're applying a lot of status effects, you can get a ton of penetration getting close to that 18,000. But for solo, go with that. Wraithful Strikes just buffs everything by 205 weapon and spell damage, so it's not a certain type. That's why I always go with this, because it's just simple set and forget. And then Reaving Blows, this is not a damage one, but this will be like a little pale order. So if you don't have pale order, you're going to get hit for 7% uh, of the direct damage done. So Reaving Blows, you got the potions, you got the poisons, you got your orc passive, you got Briar Heart going. That's why you're so dang tanky with this guy. You can just do it right there. And that frees up one here for Master at Arms. Now, most people will tell you Master at Arms and Deadly Aim is the way to go because it affects your single target damage. But Biting Aura is pretty good too. Blast Bones, Ruin of Scythe, Spin to Win, all AoE. So if you feel like your survivability is good or you have um, you have uh, pale order, you swap this out for biting aura. That's the way to go. Moving on to the ready spaghetti tree. So I pretty much stick with the same three. Rejuvenation, recovery, armor, and HP. You can switch these out if you want. Um, a couple that are good is expert evasion for dodge rolling. But then bloody renewal for kills on um, stamina is the way to go here. At the beginning of the game, you just take these ones on the outside. So if you're on the blue tree and you don't have a gazillion champion points, just come here and take untamed aggression and take uh, endless endurance. This will help you. It's not going to be the best end game, but it doesn't require any like trees or constellations to get there. So you can take a ton of points in there something that will radically change your uh survivability is preparation it's a passive here so 10 percent damage reduction at all times and it doesn't require a slottable so usually what i do is i go to uh, tireless discipline take 10 points take 10 points in a quick recovery and then 20 in here i take that before i do any damage ones because it will be, just carry your survivability and that's the champion points well, gang, that's a deep dive into the Stam Crow, the God Crow, and what I think is one of the best replacements for the Templar right now until at least Jabs gets a little bit more damage, a little bit more healing. So I'd highly recommend checking out this build if you like the Necro. It does great. I gave you all the tools to take this going solo, and you can actually adapt it to a group play and be fantastic survival and do really good damage. Ultimately, remember, parse dummy, solo, dungeons, arenas, it's all different. It's all contextual. When in doubt, you have to answer the question, what kind of player am I? What level am I at, honestly? And let's adapt the build for that. More survivability is okay than running reliquins and, and really fancy sets and dying all the time. So start with simple, throw in some more dots as you get more familiar with it. And it's a lot of fun feeding the corpses, keeping the blast bones up. Again, if you got something out of the video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll keep cranking out more of these uh, solo builds, maybe a solo tier list. Leave me a comment if you'd like that. Thanks for watching.